the equation of a line is the relation between the x and y values of any point x, y on the line. Let's look at this line here. The equation of this line is y equals x plus 4. Now if we take any point on the line, let's say we take this point here. This point here has coordinates minus 4, 0. Well, the relationship between the x and y values of this point is given by y equals x plus 4. So if we put minus 4 in for x in this equation, you see we get minus 4 plus 4 equals 0. So all I did here was replace x with minus 4. Then I added on 4 and I get y equals 0. Exactly what we expect since this is the equation of the line. Let's look at another point on the line. Um, let's look at this point here. Its coordinates are 2 comma 6. So for this point x equals 2. So we want to find out what y is. We just plug 2 in for x. y equals 2 plus 4 which is indeed 6. So we can see that the point 2 6 satisfies this equation. If we put 2 in for x, we get y equals 6. So if a point is on the line, then it must satisfy the equation of the line, y equals x plus 4 in this case. Let's look at this example. We want to show that the points 1, 5 and minus 1.5, 2.5 are on the line, y equals x plus 4. Let's look at the point 1, 5. Well, x is 1, y is 5. So if x equals 1, we plug 1 in for x. So we get y equals 1 plus 4. And indeed, this works out to be 5. So when we plug 1 in for x, we get y equals 5. So that shows us that the point 1, 5 satisfies the equation. If it satisfies the equation, it means that one, the point 1, 5 is on the line, and we can see that from the diagram. If we go to x equals 1 and up to the line, we get the point, we see that 1, 5 is indeed on the line. Now let's look at the second point. Its coordinates are minus 1.5, 2.5. So we have our line, y equals x plus 4. So if we plug minus 1.5 in for x, what do we get? we get y equals minus 1.5 plus 4. Now minus 1.5 plus 4 is actually 2.5. So now we see that minus 1.5, 2.5 satisfies the equation of the line. So it means that the point with coordinates minus 1.5, 2.5 is on line, is on the line. And we can see that from the diagram. We go to minus 1.5, and if we go up to the line, we do indeed get the point with coordinates minus 1.5, comma 2.5. See the y value of this point is 2.5. Now we want to show that the point minus 1.4 is not on the line. Well, this means that the point minus 1.4 should not satisfy the equation of the line. So we let minus 1, we sub minus 1 in for x, and we work this out. We get minus 1 plus 4, which is 3. Okay, so we don't get the y value. We don't get 4. So what we get is a number that's not equal to 4. So this means that minus 1, 4 is not on line. So let's see that point, minus 1, 4. Uh, is actually this point here. It's above the line. Minus 1, 3 is on the line. See, when we plugged minus 1 in for x, we got out 3. So when x is minus 1, y is 3, but y is not 4. Now the next thing that we need to look at is how to get the equation of a line. We know that the equation of this line is y equals x plus 4, and we know what it means. But how do we actually arrive at this equation? 
okay, we have a formula for doing that. If m is the slope of a line and x1, y1 is any point on the line, then the equation of the line is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we need two things to use this formula. We need the slope of the line, that's m, and x1, y1 stands for any point on the line. Well, there are two ways that we can get the slope of a line. One way involves looking at the diagram and picking out two points on the, on the line. And uh, that's the way I'm going to do it now. So we have the point minus 4, 0. And we have this point here, which is 0, 4. To get the slope of the line, we construct a right angle triangle, as we did in previous videos. And we get the vertical distance between the two points also known as the rise. The vertical distance here is 4. The horizontal distance between the two points, also known as the run, is also 4. We just want the distance. And then we take the rise and divide by the run. So we can see that for this line, the slope is 4 divided by 4, which is 1. This line has positive slope. It's a line sloping in this direction. So we don't we keep this as plus 1. Of course, the other way to do it would be to use your formula. If you happen to be given two points on the line, call one of the points x1, y1, and the other point x2, y2. And if you feed these values through the formula, which I'll just quickly run through here, you can get the slope. So y2 minus y1 is the vertical distance between the points. So that's going to be 4 minus 0. Now 4 minus 0 is 4. Uh, x2 minus x1 is the horizontal distance between the points. That's going to be 0 minus minus 4. That's 0 plus 4, which is 4. So we can see we get 1 again, of course. Okay, so that's the slope of the line. Now, we need a point on the line. x1, y1 stands for any point on the line. So x1, y1 is fixed. xy in the formula stands for, the, stands for any point. But x1, y1 is a given point. So we can use either of these, or any, indeed any point, it doesn't matter. We'll still end up with the same equation. Um, I will use this one here, minus 4, 0. So we label it x1, y1, and we have our formula, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So y minus y1, well y1 is 0 for this point, equals m, which is 1, times x minus x1 for this point is minus 4. So you can see that x and y, xy is actually the coordinates of any point on this line, any general point. General point is referred to as xy. And we're looking for the relation between x and y. That relation is called the equation of the line. OK, let's simplify this. y minus 0 is just y. Um, we have x minus minus 4. Well, that's just x plus 4. And we multiply by 1. Well, that's just going to give us x plus 4. So here is our equation as before. Now, if you repeat this process with any point, as I've said before, you'll get the same answer. We could have used this point or this point or this point or this. It doesn't matter. You will end up with y equals x plus 4. Let's take this example. Find the equation of a line with slope minus 3 quarters and passing through the point 2 minus 3. Well, the letter M stands for the slope, so the slope is minus 3 quarters. The line passes through the point 2 minus 3. That means 2 minus 3 is on the line, of course. So for our formula, we label the point given as x1, y1. Then we write down our equation. Uh, we sub everything in, so for y1, we sub in minus 3, so we have y minus minus 3, well that's y plus 3, m is minus 3 quarters times x minus x1, x1 is 2. Okay, so this is the equation of the line. Now normally we prefer to simplify this, of course. We normally, um, you know, prefer to get rid of fractions, so we want to get rid of this 4. So to do that, we multiply the entire equation by 4. 
So whatever this denominator is, just multiply it all by the denominator. This is really just for cosmetic reasons. Uh, this here is actually the equation of the line. But let's just get it into a better looking form. So we multiply both sides by 4. So if we multiply the left hand side by 4, what do we get? Well, we get 4 times y plus 4 times 3. So we get 4y plus 12. We multiply the right hand side by 3, we 4 times minus 3 quarters. Well, if we stick a 4 in front of the right hand side, these 4 times minus 3 quarters will give us minus 3. And then we have to multiply minus 3 into x minus 2. Okay, so that's what happens. So there are three things being multiplied on the right hand side. We have the 4, uh, we have minus 3 quarters, and we have x minus 2. But when we multiply 4 by minus 3 quarters, we get minus 3. And that minus 3 has to be multiplied into x minus 2. Okay, so that's why we multiply by 4, to get rid of this denominator. Anyway, minus 3 times x minus 2 is minus 3x plus 6. Now, often what's done is we bring everything to one side and write 0 on one side. Or, sometimes we try to write y in terms of x. Well, that won't be so easy here, um, because... If we try to write y in terms of x here, we're just going to go back to having fractions in our equation. So we won't write y in terms of x for this equation. We will just bring everything to one side. So we'll bring the minus 3x plus 6 to the left-hand side. So the minus 3x becomes plus 3x. Then we have plus 12 minus 6 is plus 6. So when we bring everything across, we have 0 on the right-hand side. It's like we have uh, subtracted minus 3x plus 6 from both sides. Now let's draw a graph of this line. We know that it passes through the point 2 minus 3, so let's plot that point. 2 minus 3 is here. The slope is negative, so that means we have a line going in this direction. We can see for the slope that the rise over the run is 3 over 4. So that means if we go down 3 units, we will be going across 4 units to meet the line. And as I said, we have a line with negative slope, so it's sloping this way. Otherwise, if it was plus 3 quarters, it would be um, 3 across, or sorry, 4 across and 3 up. Another way that you could check that this is the correct equation is to plug the point that you used to get the equation into the equation. So if you plug 2 minus 3 into this, it should satisfy it. You should get 0. Uh, y is minus 3 for this point. x is 2. So we just write out the equation, replacing x with 2 and y with minus 3. And if we work out all of this, we should get 0. You see, we get minus 12. Uh, plus 6 plus 6, that's minus 12 plus 12, which is 0. Of course, if this doesn't work out, well, you know you've made a mistake somewhere in the calculations.